Hello friends, welcome to my channel Blockon. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the peripheral nerve stimulator guided low interscalene block, which is also known as the cross of interscalene and the subclavian perivascular brachial plexus block. The needle insertion point is lower than the classic or Winnie's interscalene brachial plexus approach but higher than the supraclavicular brachial plexus approach. We can avoid the complications of interscalene approach like uh, cervical epidural or vertebral artery injection as well as the complications of subclavian perivascular brachial plexus block like pneumothorax. The brachial plexus is very superficial at this location, usually within 1 to 1.5 cm from the skin. It provides reliable anesthesia or analgesia for shoulder, elbow or forearm surgeries. The patient is placed in supine position and the head is slightly turned away from the side to be blocked. The ipsilateral hand is placed by the side of the patient or somebody can hold the hand with flexion at elbow joint and away from the trunk. The hand as you can see here should not be kept over the trunk like this picture. To know the reason, please continue watching this video. I personally use 0.5% bupivacaine or levobupivacaine or 0.75% ropivacaine for anesthetic purpose with uh, 4 to 8 milligram of dexamethasone as adjuvant 10 to 15 ml of local anesthetic is usually needed for this block. The landmark for this block can be accentuated by two simple techniques. First, Pull the patient's upper limb gently towards their knee. This flattens the skin of the neck and helps to identify the structures. Second, ask the patient to lift the head and turn the face slightly towards the opposite side. It tenses the sternocleidomastoid muscle and helps to identify the posterior border of the clavicular head. The correct interscalene groove that is between the anterior and the middle interscalene muscles is of paramount importance. The point of needle entry is marked two fingers breadth above the clavicle in the interscalene groove. The brachial plexus is superficial at this location. Usually we get it within one to two centimeter from the skin. The needle is inserted perpendicular to the skin and advanced slowly. After getting the desired motor response, the current is reduced from the initial setting of 1.5 to 0.5 milliamps. The twitches must be visible at 0.4 and it should disappear at 0.2 milliamps to prevent the intraneural injection. The local anesthetic is injected in 3 to 5 ml aliquots after negative aspiration for the blood. Any of the following motor responses, including the shoulder abduction, elbow, wrist, or finger flexion or extension, pectoralis contraction, can be accepted as successful localization of the brachial plexus. 
with a similar success rate. Switches of the diaphragm indicates the stimulation of phrenic nerve. The needle here is inserted to anterior and medial. Uh, we have to withdraw the needle and reinsert 15 degree posterior and lateral. Here you can see the contraction of the diaphragm creates a pseudo response of the upper limb. This is the reason why you should keep the upper limb away from the lower thoracic or upper abdominal region. The local twitch of the neck muscles is the result of direct stimulation of anterior scalene or the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Here, we have to withdraw the needle and reinsert. The trapezius muscle twitch indicates the stimulation of accessory nerve. The needle is too posterior to the brachial plexus, so we need to withdraw and redirect it anteriorly. Twitch of the scapula or serratus anterior muscle results from the stimulation of long thoracic nerve posterior or deep to the brachial plexus. Here we have to withdraw the needle, reassess the landmark and then uh, reinsert the needle accordingly. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.